Why are data structures important? Programming is mostly about data. A program will receive some data, manipulate it, and return the output. Data refers to all kinds of information, numbers, strings, and more complex pieces. Data structures is basically the structure or container that you use to hold and organize your data so it can be easily manipulated and accessed. Depending on how you organize your data, in other words, the data structures that you choose will impact how fast or slow your program is. A good understanding of data structures and its performance implications is key to write elegant code that run quickly and smoothly. Which data structures do I need to know? The main data structures any engineer should know are arrays, hash tables, stack and queues, linked lists, trees and graphs. Each of these structures have different names in different languages, however, the general concept is the same. Let's talk about each of those. Arrays is the most basic data structure, simply a list of data elements that you can access by index, which is the position of the data inside the array. Arrays are quite efficient searching if the elements in the array are ordered. However, insertions and deletions are not as efficient since you have to sift all elements. Next is a hash table. Hash table is a list of pair values. The first item in the pair is the key and the second item is the value. With hash table, you can access objects by the key, so this structure is really fast for lookups. To understand the difference between arrays and hash tables, you could think of a library. Let's say that you have a collection of books and the cover of each of those is blank. The only information in the cover is the number. So, if you like to find the books written by Oscar Wilde, you will have to open every book and check the author. However, if you write the author in the cover, you could find the Oscar Wilde books at once. Therefore, hash tables are faster than arrays for lookups, also faster for insertion and deleting objects. However, hash tables don't maintain any order. Next data structure will be stacks and queues. Basically, stack and queues are arrays, however, there are some restrictions in how to use them. These data structures are really useful as temporary containers that allow you to handle the data in order. Let's say that you would like to store the orders in a restaurant. It will be important that you process the requests in the same order as you receive them. Now let's talk about each of those restrictions. Stacks work like a pile of plates. Data can only be inserted at the end of the stack. You can only read and remove from the end of the stack, also known as LIFO, last in, first out. Now let's talk about the queues. A good example will be a line of people in a movie theater. The first one in the line is the first one that leaves and people can only join the queue at the end. In other words, you can only insert at the end, only read from the front and only remove from the front. For instance, a queue could be used to handle the printing jobs in a printer application. Next is the linked list. The linked list is a node-based data structure. A linked list is similar to an array in the sense that it represents a line of elements, however, linked list is implemented differently memory-wise. Unlike the arrays, the memory cells are not next to each other, but spread across different cells. So you might be wondering, how can a computer find these cells? In addition to the data, every node to store the memory address of the next node in the linked list. This can provide better performance in some situations where you need to delete and insert elements 
from the beginning of the list. Next data structure is a tree. The tree is also a node-based structure. Every tree has a root node, which has zero or more child nodes. A tree cannot contain cycles. Trees are binary if each node has up to two nodes, like the tree on the left. You also have binary search trees, which means it's binary so every node has up to two nodes and its left descendants are less or equal to the current, to the current node. And the right descendants are greater than the current node. This rule applies to all nodes. The benefit that the tree has over a hash table is in addition to of doing quick search insertions and deletions, it can also maintain order. Next data structure is a graph. Trees are actually graphs with some restrictions. In other words, a tree is a connected graph without cycles. A graph is a collection of nodes with edges in between. A graph could be directed, which means the nodes are connected in one direction, like a one-way street. You can also have an undirected graph, which means nodes are connected in both directions. A graph is a good data structure to represent relationship between data. For instance, it is a really good fit for social networks. To recap, we have seen six data structures. The arrays, which offer quick access by index, efficient search, however, insertion and deletions are not as efficient, has tables which offer quick lookups, insertions and deletions, but cannot maintain order, stacking queues, which are ideal if you want to process data in the same order as you received them, linked lists, which offer great performance if you are deleting and inserting from the beginning, trees offer good performance for lookups, insertion and deletions if they are balanced, plus they can keep order, and last, graphs, which is a good fit to represent relations between data. I hope you feel that you have a good overall understanding of data structures now. Please subscribe if you enjoyed the video and you would like to see more videos like this one. Thank you so much for watching.